All right, so we are Leviathan Productions, and my name is Jordan Vaughn. I was responsible for the low-level engine for this, for the network code, for audio, and for some of the high-level uh, concepts such as uh, power-ups and spawn points and explosions. And I'm going to introduce the rest of my team. At the end, we have Andrew Holman. He was responsible for the physics engine, all the collisions and the collision resolution. And right here, we have Forrest Baker. He's responsible for the HUD, a lot of the graphics API, uh, interfacing with DirectX. And right next to him, we have Randy Liu. He wrote all our shaders and wrote, designed almost all of our content except the sounds. And right here, we have Russell and Balaganski. He did a lot of the integration, a lot of the debugging, a lot of the high-level game concepts. And he was basically our major integrator. And he wrote all the configuration, a lot of the data-driven stuff. And so, yeah, I already introduced myself. So we need two people to play our game, 20,000 frags under the sea. So if I can get two volunteers. Yes. Three? Oh, okay, we need three. We're going to play with five people. So, one. Uh, any other volunteers? Two. One more. Okay, three. Eric. Oh. <laughs> All right. So, looks like everything's set. So, as they get started, I'll explain what our game is about. It took us a long time to come up with this concept. Uh, we had a lot of vigorous debates over the first week and a half about what we would do. And we settled upon this compromise. It's a first-person shooter in the tradition of Doom and Halo and Wolfenstein. A bunch, you can think of a bunch of other great titles. But we took a different approach. We went along the line that the Descent series took. One of the interesting um, aspects of our game is there's absolutely no gravity. So as Andrew here is playing, you can see him on the screen. He's not being weighed down at all. He's in a completely um, gravityless environment. So you have complete control over your rotation, your translational motion, uh, your roll, your pitch, etc. So we have 12 weapons in total, and you'll see them as he's playing. Here he has harpoons. It's one of the most basic weapons you can have. Um, on the HUD, you have your radar on the left. <laughs> So um, it very, the dots on the radar tell where your enemies are and where enemy corpses are. So it's really hard to distinguish between enemies and corpses. So the colors on the radar can help you out a bit with that. Um, towards the top of the radar are enemies that are in front of you. The size and color of the dot, the intensity of the red, tells you whether they're above or below you. And then you have the health bar in the middle at the bottom. Also a display of your current weapon and how much ammunition you have. And then on the right you have these weapon icons, which we didn't have enough time to finish, so we have some placeholders in there, such as that one right there, LOL irony. So this right here is the shotgun. Um, apparently, Andrew has all the weapons, and you can select them with the number keys on your keyboard. So there you go. And every time you kill an enemy, he drops a weapon, whatever one he's carrying, and it contains all the ammo that he had. So, scattered all throughout this immersive cavern world are various power-ups. And, oh, that little bing sound that you heard there is a mine turning on. When you lay mines, they're inactive for a while, and then they start rotating. And then they can explode when you come in contact with them. So there's a mine right there. It's not active yet. Not active. There we go. Now it's on. And he decided to run into his own mine. Pretty smart. So, yeah. And you can also blow him up by shooting at him. So let's see, what do we have in here? Rotating, ah, cloaking device. Excellent. You want to just go ahead and get that? There you go. So for about 20 or 25 seconds, he's going to be nearly invisible and basically going to work his enemies really easily. So let's see what happens if he flies through this tunnel. There's a tuna can, gives him a nice health boost. Let's see what this is here. Ah, it's a weapon he already has. You already have the weapon, you don't pick it up. So he's playing a Barracuda right now. We have three classes of fish that you can choose from, and you switch when you die. So Barracuda is kind of the middle range. He's moderately fast, has a decent amount of health. Um, the other classes, looks like he's in the middle of killing another Barracuda. The other classes, that one right there is a Piranha. That's the lighter weight, faster one. Um, very easy to kill, but, he, but since he's so fast, he's really hard to hit. But with the right types of weapons, you can easily take him out. All right, Andrew's launching some torpedoes here. Highly explosive, very fast. Let's see what happens here. So, he's taking on a Barracuda in the pool room. You see our little life rafts there. 
Right. And then the third class is the grouper. He's the heavyweight. So if you ever played Team Fortress Classic, he's like the heavy weapons guy. Got lots of health, very slow, very easy to hit, but it takes a lot to take him out. So. Let's see what's the up here. I think he's behind you, Andrew. <laughs> All right, so someone's taking him out with the chain gun, which is what Andrew happens to have. There it is. All right, so he's been vaporized. All right, a bunch of fish food right there. Since he's fully healthy, he's not going to pick him up. Let's see, what does he have now? He has a grappling hook. So this weapon actually resulted from a bug that uh, Russellin discovered. What happens when you shoot a character with a grappling hook, it pulls it towards you a little bit. So that, that could be useful if you have a group of mines you want to pull them into the mines. I don't know, if you're into that kind of strategy, it'll work. So. All right, let's see, he's back to the grappling hook. Now the regular shotgun. So you see, you can, all the weapons are divided into slots. So when you hit a slot number, it'll cycle between the weapons in that slot. And they're roughly organized based on what kind of weapons they are. The first slot tends to be like grappling hook and your really basic weapons. Second one is railgun and torpedoes. Third one tends to be shotguns and more spear-based weapons. The fourth one is rapid fire and the fifth one is depth charges and mines. So let's see. Spear cycle guns. Pretty, pretty basic machine-like gun. Alright, the halo gun. This is a massive damage rapid fire weapon. Let's see what happens when he lays it down on this piranha. You gonna get him, Andrew? No? Okay, going back to the chain gun. Okay, so for the sound system, we used F mod EX. It's a really simple API, and it t turned out to work pretty well. So uh, I was planning on adding some reverb effects to the sounds, but I didn't get around to it. There, we deemed there were some more important things to work on. The network is a pretty simple client-server system. So the client controls all the state, it does all the physics, all the position updating, and clients, which is what the other players over here are playing on, will send input messages to the server and say, okay, I want to move in this direction. And the server will say, okay, here's your new position. All right, so Andrew's now playing as a piranha. All right, we're in the bear room here. Let's see, Andrew, have you picked up the crystal meth yet? Andrew, why don't you pick up some crystal meth? <laughs> okay, he's gonna cheat and spawn one in front of him. All right, there we go. Pick it up. <laughs> All right, so psychedelic colors and you move really, really fast. So. It'll wear off in about 20 or 30 seconds. Okay, going around. Let's see what else, what, other, what tricks he has up his sleeve. Okay, sardine tin, more health. Go into the pool room. There's a rail gun in here. All right, so he's trying to use the railgun here. The nice bubble trail effect. Unlike some first-person shooters, it's really hard to hit people in this game with a railgun, a typical sniping weapon. All right, there's a grouper. So now we're going to move on to the grappling hook. We'll see if he can uh, catch some guys in his wake.
All right, he's having a little trouble there. He's a pretty feisty fish he's going after. <laughs> As I said, it's really hard to hit him with these weapons, the more ray-based ones. Okay, so he's giving up on that strategy, going straight to the cycling weapons. All right, back to the shotgun. Okay, so you might have noticed, but when you fire weapons, we have a dynamic lighting system, so... If you're close to a wall, it's really easy to see that the walls light up. Um, Randy, as I said, was responsible for writing all the shaders, so all the effects that you see on the screen are due to him. All the caustics, the light, the light ripples that you see on the walls, all the textures. Randy built this entire map and used the textures in here. He also built all the models, so the chain gun shots here are all his. So are the mines. By the way, all the music was composed by a good friend of ours named Will Linton. He lives up in San Francisco. So we have right now about five of his songs looping as we play the game. And we got most of the sounds from a website called soundsnap.com. And we have a couple of Doom sounds in here as well. We intended them as placeholders, but we kept them because we thought they were pretty cool. Yeah, all the water effects up there, Randy's. So he implemented the reflection mapping that's used to generate that effect. One of our power-ups, the tuna can, has normal mapping as well. So if you're up close to it, you see some bumps on it, some ripples. That's due to him. And all the, all the blood that you see there, that's all Baker's code. It's all forest code. He implemented that with sprites. And all the bubbles that come out of rail guns and grappling hooks, those are sprites as well. All right, so we're going to run for about one or two more minutes. So, Let's see, Andrew, have you gotten the roids yet? Where are the steroids? Okay, there are the roids. So the roids boost your power by about fourfold. Last about 20 or 30 seconds. All right, we're coming up on time, so why don't we finish it with some depth charges and we'll call it a game. Oh, by the way, let's see what the scores are. Go ahead and press tab. Let's take a peek. There we go. All right, I don't know who those people are. Imagine Leviathan is Andrew. He's exceptionally good at this game. There you go. Those are depth charge in action. It goes straight down from your, based on your orientation. It'll collide with the walls and does splash damage. All right, he managed to kill himself with one. And that's it. That's game. And here's our final score.
All right, so um, I know I didn't go into the technical details too much, but if you have any questions for us, we'd be glad to answer them. Any questions? In the back? I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? Calling, calling. Um, Forrest can answer that. Yeah, we're using, um, uh, it should be uh, counterclockwise calling. Um, okay, so in terms of physics, we're not doing any calling. Uh, what, is there any particular kind of calling you want to know about? <laughs> I'm sorry, we can't hear you. Can you speak a little bit louder? <laughs> no, it, it, it's not portal calling. We thought about implementing that, but we never got to it. Unfortunately, we were extremely pressed on time, so we're just, as, as you can see, we're still a bit uh, rough on the edges during the demo. This is because we're basically working the last week straight through, just uh, trying to finish up everything up. We actually managed to finish, but unfortunately, we had very little time to, you know, even prepare. Um, as far as calling goes, we don't, um, we did want to use portal calling. Basically, what it is is you wouldn't even render um, anything that's behind a door, for instance, if it's closed. Um, what we do do is, at least for physics, we don't compute everything. We do simple checks first. So we compute, you know, the bounding sphere of something before computing uh, its, its higher level, uh, its lower level um, bounding volumes. Uh, any other questions? Yes? <laughs> oh, no, it only speeds up the, um, the person who has it. So the advantage there is that you get the ridiculous speed boost, but you also can't see, and you can't, it's obviously much harder to control your character. It's a trade-off, is everything. <laughs> uh, any other questions? All right. Uh, Randy can answer that. Can you repeat that? Um, so the objects in the level, uh, I model them in uh, 3D Studio Max, and for the textures, I use Adobe Photoshop.